Welcome to another Whitmix 3-Shape tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the process of designing an anatomical coping and the dental designer. We need to open the scan order in Dental Manager to begin the designing. To do this, we can either double click on the order or click on the order and press the tooth icon. The first step in the designing process is selecting the insertion direction. To set the insertion direction from the direction we are looking, we can select the set button. The red markings on the die represent the undercuts. If we want to change the insertion direction back to the starting point, we click on the optimize button. If we click on the arrows, it'll move the insertion direction in the desired direction. We can change what the difference map displays by clicking on the desired circle. The default is undercut area, but we can change it to measure undercuts if we find it more useful. Now that we have chosen our insertion direction, we can select the margin. The first step in selecting the margin is marking the margin with points. We can use the mouse or the keyboard. When using the keyboard, we can move the margin up or down using the up and down arrow keys. We can move to the last point or the next point by using the left or right arrow keys. When using the mouse, we'll click on the margin and then click a few inches down the margin to add another point. We repeat this process until the margin's points are all connected. Once we've selected the general margin, using the large points, we'll hit OK. After we hit OK, a new set of options will become available. We'll use these options to prepare a more precise margin. We can click the checkbox next to show undercuts to display the undercuts. If we want to manipulate the margin even more using points, we can select the show points option. This will display all the points that make up the margin line. To move the point, left mouse click and drag. The last step when choosing the margin is to turn on the show undercuts option and make sure that your margin doesn't fall below any undercuts. You can move the margin either by left mouse clicking or left mouse click and drag, which allows you to draw the changes. After we have selected the correct margin, we'll click on OK to move on to the die interface settings. Under settings, we can turn on remove undercuts as well as turn on drill compensation. There's also some advanced settings, which we can change. I wouldn't recommend changing these settings without talking to your milling center. If we want to preview the die interface with the settings we have selected, we can press Apply. If we're happy with our die interface, then we can press OK to move on to Smile Composer. The first step in Smile Composer is to click on the picture of the arch under Choosing Smile Library. This will allow us to choose a starting point that is similar to the neighboring teeth. To see what the selected library would look like, we click on the picture of the tooth and click Apply. Once we find a library that works well, we can press OK to use that library. Next, we'll left click on the tooth and then left click on the red point to rotate the tooth. To move the whole tooth, we'll left click on the tooth and then drag. Next, we'll look down the buckle corridor and pull the green point down to increase the length of our design near the margin. Next, we'll look from the lingual side and click on the red point and tilt the tooth more towards the distal. Then we'll click on the green point and pull the tooth down out of occlusion. Using the Morph tool, we'll adjust the thickness of the design around the margin. If we hold down Control while hovering over a point in the Morph tool, it will show an arrow. This allows us to pull the area selected either up or down. To give the tooth contacts, we can use the Morph tool or the Transform tool. When using the Morph tool, Move the mouse to the very edge of the tooth. This will cause the edge to become darker. Next, left click and drag the tooth to the desired contact with the neighboring tooth. When using the transform tool, you click on the green point and drag the tooth until it makes contact with the neighboring tooth. Now that we're done with the Smile Composer, we'll click on Sculpt. The first thing we want to do is click on Operations and Parameters. Now we'll press the play button next to enforce minimum thickness, cut to antagonist, and cut to neighbors. We'll click next to move on to the frame design. We can slide the sliders at the right hand side of the screen 
to toggle the opacity of the arches and tooth design. The first slider is the prep, the second is the antagonist, the third is the frame design after cutback, the fourth is the design before cutback, and the last is minimum thickness. To turn off the minimum thickness, click the circle to deselect it. We'll just press OK to move on to sculpting the framework. I recommend turning the anatomy design off so that we can see the framework we're designing. We'll add some support to the buckle as well. Next, we'll add some support to the lingual and then blend it by using the smooth tool. After we've added support to the buckle and lingual cusp, I like to smooth around the margins. This will make the final product less bulky. After we're done smoothing, we'll enforce the minimum thickness to prevent milling holes in the coping. The anatomical coping is now ready to be milled. To save and close the design, press Next and then click on the Close button. This concludes Tutorial 3 of this series. If you have any questions, visit whipmix.com. Thanks for watching.